it is my great honor to introduce our speaker, Dr. Sheree Phillips Prentice. She is a Weinberg College graduate, class of 1989. Dr. Prentice is a board certified physician in occupational and environmental medicine. In 2008, Sheree was diagnosed with breast cancer, a condition that threatened to end her career in medicine and maybe her career altogether. Sheree recovered and is now an author, a motivational speaker, and a national spokeswoman for the Susan G. Common Three Day, a series of 60 mile walkathons. It's nationwide and it raises money for breast cancer prevention and research. Dr. Prentice has been featured in the New England Journal of Medicine and journals called Essence and Oxygen and the Chicago Tribune. She's served as Global Medical Director of Medical Operations for Hospira, Associate Area, Associate Area Medical Director for the Postal Service, and Program Medical Director of, of Occupational Health and Employee Health for Advocate Healthcare, the largest healthcare system in Illinois. Dr. Prentice holds a BA with honors in psychology and pre-medical studies from Northwestern University. She has her MD from Loyola. She's got some green on because of that. And a master's degree in public health from the University of Illinois. She's a certified physician executive, as well as a member of the American College of Occupational and Environmental Medicine. She's also a fellow director of the board and CPE tutor teaching fellow of the American Association for Physician Leadership. She's a wonderful person with a fantastic sense of humor. Please join me in welcoming Cherie Prentice back to Northwestern University. Wow. Well, let me check my watch. Okay. Good afternoon. Thank you, Dean Radner, for an awesome introduction. Wow. To the hardworking 2015 graduating class of Weinberg College. To their parents, who are much poorer today than they were four years ago, <laughs> faculty and staff. I'm Dr. Cherie, a very proud alum of Northwestern University. It's hard to believe that it's been 26 years since I once sat where you are sitting, praying that the speaker wouldn't be long and boring, and anxiously awaiting my time to turn my tassel to the left. I've been a physician for the last 22 years. I've wanted to be a doctor ever since I was two. I made up in my mind as a freshman in high school that I was going to matriculate and graduate from Northwestern University, knowing that doing so would land me a spot in one of the nation's best medical schools, and it did. But my journey hasn't been easy. I married young, actually one week before I started my senior year here at Northwestern. I went on to have two beautiful daughters after medical school, but unfortunately after 18 years that marriage ended. And I found myself 40 years old and the single mother of two teenage daughters. But my foundational years here at Northwestern prepared me for being alone, spurred my ingenuity, and developed my survival skills. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so I managed to live a very full life with my beautiful family until October 1st, 2008. That's when everything changed. I found a lump in my right breast. It was cancer. I underwent a partial mastectomy, removal of 16 lymph nodes, three of which were positive for cancer, 15 rounds of chemotherapy, and 33 treatments of radiation. After just three rounds of chemo, I was home alone and developed crushing chest pain. Instead of dialing 911, I pulled out my life insurance policy, climbed in bed, and said my prayers. After about six hours, much to my dismay, I woke up. <laughs> I was subsequently diagnosed with an 80% blockage of my right coronary artery. Apparently, I had been born with a heart defect where my right coronary artery was being squished between my pulmonary artery and my aorta. 
it was inoperable. But a cardiologist attempted to place 22 different size stents to open it up, and none of them worked. Now, how many of you remember your organic chemistry final? <laughs> yeah. You shouting now, but you wasn't shouting then. <laughs> you know when you just put your head down in, in the many pages of the test, never looking up, just plowing through to get done? And when you walked out of there, you had no clue as to how well you did. But the one thing you did know, and that was, it was over. Well, that's pretty much how I faced my treatment. So much so that most people didn't have a clue that I had even been diagnosed. But there was one person in particular who always kept me driven, even when I tried to give up. Her name is Yvonne Springs. Yvonne was born in Sharon, Mississippi, great-grandchild of slaves, married at 15, had her first child at 16. She was a high school dropout because back in those days, family came first. She endured repeated domestic violence, but for fear of the lives of her children, didn't run until they were safely tucked away. By 26, she had four children and had remarried. Although her life was ahead of her, she was living for her children, wanting to set an example for her two daughters and her two sons. She would not allow other societal role models to set the paths for her children. She repurposed her life. Five years after her last child was born, she received her GED, scoring in the top 5% of all people who had ever taken the test since it started. She received straight A's in all courses leading to an associate's degree. And she went on to become one of the United States Equal Employment Opportunity Commission's leading systemic investigators. Yvonne decided to live in her own power. And I was fascinated by her tenacity and incentivized by her actions for two reasons. First, I too have two daughters and was a single parent after a failed marriage. Your parents would never want you to view their lives as a failure. But you are not a failure because you try something and it doesn't work out. You fail only when you stop trying. Secondly, Yvonne is my mom. She died while I was going through chemo. And I truly believe that if I don't give life my all, she will rise up, come and find me, and knock some sense into me. <laughs> that night when I wanted to die, I was tired of the fight, and I did not want to live without my mom. Pain can cause us to be so selfish, because in that moment, I couldn't see how my dying would cause my daughters to live without theirs. But in my mom's life, and even in her death, I was able to find my purpose. I changed my outlook, and I found that people can alter their lives by altering their attitudes. But just when I was getting back on track, lymphedema set in. The lymph nodes in my right arm had been completely destroyed between the surgery and the radiation, leaving me with permanent severe swelling of my right arm, hands, hand, and fingers. The swelling made performing the clinical aspects of my job impossible. The job I've always wanted since I was two. I'm forced to wear compression garments daily in order to control the swelling. And to add insult to injury, at the time my boss told me, Cherie, a physician who is not clinically capable is of no value to me. Having been born and raised on the south side of Chicago, I should have told him and his mama where they could go. <laughs> Instead, I had the great pleasure of less than one year later of informing him that I was now the national spokesperson for the Susan G. Coleman Three Day, the world's largest breast cancer organization. <laughs> 
As a physician and a patient, I've changed my perspective. I want you to be bold in your living. Be willing to take action when others won't. Give abundantly, not just of your money, but of your time, your presence, your smile, and your touch. Your lives are about to become very busy, very full. But I want you to slow down to the point where you can appreciate the interaction of giving and receiving. And then you'll appreciate the healing effects that it can have. Learn to slow down to the point where you realize the smile you give may very well be the last smile that person sees. Live in the present and hope in your future. It has been said that our lives are the sum of our fears. The decisions made by us daily are what helps us get to where we want to be, moving us from where we are or experiencing no change at all. As each of you go on to live out the great plans for your lives, you will find that in order to evolve and improve, you must choose not to relinquish your power to misperceptions, fears, painful situations, or people. Nothing can get in your way or prevent you from reaching your goal without your permission. I've learned that Joy doesn't come from having your circumstances in order and under control. Joy comes from what's in your heart. Contentment is not about fame, being well known, how much money you have, your position at work, or your social circle. It's not found in your level of education or what side of the tracks you were born on. Contentment is a heart attitude. There's nobody happier than a truly thankful person, a truly content person. The word content means being satisfied to the point where nothing disturbs you no matter what's going on, but never satisfied to the point where you never want anything to change. We all want to see things get better, but where you are right this minute and at any given moment in your life does not have to disturb you. Our struggles, have a way of bringing us to a point where we are forced to consider what we still have rather than what we've lost in order to bring a new path or vision into view. We are forced to create, recreate purpose for our lives. This recreation allows us to overcome our struggles by breathing new life into dying hope. The hope that sees the invisible feels the intangible, and believes the impossible. When we examine why we hesitate or avoid facing challenges in our lives, we would have to admit that fear is what stands in our way. It seems that life always has a way of bringing us to a place where we need to make a fresh start. Your time here at Weinberg College is done. And regardless of what you have chosen to do next, each of you is embarking on something new. This is your new beginning, your time to get up and get on with your dream, your vision, your assignment, your life, because it belongs to you. Do today what others won't, so you can live tomorrow like others can't. Some of you will succeed because you are destined to, but most will succeed because you are determined to. Success is not a destination, but rather a journey. And some may choose to define their success by how rich they are. But there are two ways of being rich. One is to have all that you want. The other, the one that's worked for me, is to be satisfied with what you have. On this journey in life, you have to be comfortable with uncertainty and improvisation. When that happens, you will live wisely and well, not in spite of your troublesome journey, but because of it. None of us were made for easy. Being alive entails more than mere existence. The human existence is paradoxically so frail and yet so powerful. Hooking into that power 
is what allows us to turn struggles into triumphs, bring visions into existence, and dreams into reality. My challenges caused me to stray off course, but baby, I'm back. But for me, when I say that I'm back, I'm not referring to any state of being where I once was. I say that I'm back to the person that I was born to be, but never was. I was born to be exceptional, but lived in mediocrity. I'm back to the person that I was meant to be, which is a beacon of hope, but never lived up to because I was hiding in the shadows of someone else's light. I'm back to fulfill the purpose that was always intended for me, and that, my friends, simply is to live. I'm Dr. Cherie, and my prescription for life is to live. Love yourself and others. Inspire those around you. Voice your dreams and ambitions. And finally, enjoy life. To the 2015 graduating class of Weinberg College, may you always find new roads to travel, new horizons to explore, new dreams to call your own. God bless you.